I love Family Guy. I've been a fan ever since I was a kid. Yeah, for some reason my parents let me have these two DVDs when I was like six years old. So yeah, thanks mum and dad. Family Guy has over 400 episodes and 22 seasons in total. Family Guy has had many special episodes over the years, including the Star Wars trilogy and the 40 minute Stewie and Brian episode, which I covered by the way, so link in description. But today, I want to talk about 8 specific episodes of Family Guy that are a mini-series within the show, and those are the Road 2 episodes. The Road 2 episodes are a parody of the 7 Road 2 comedy films starring Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. These episodes usually revolve around Stewie and Brian on a road trip, in a foreign, supernatural or science fiction setting outside of the show's normal location of Kerhog. The episodes are known for featuring elaborate musical numbers similar to the original films, and as of 2024, they are 8 Road 2 episodes in total. So today, I decided to watch all 8 of the Road 2 episodes and rank them from worst to best in my opinion. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned as we dive into the Family Guy Road 2 episodes. Okay. My least favourite is the most recent episode in the series, and that is Road to India. The episode begins with Brian's computer, and it freezes up, so he calls the technical support for assistance. Brian then becomes attractive to an employee named Padma, and begins to start telling her lies to try and impress her over the phone. When Brian says that he wishes to start a relationship with Padma, Stewie tells him that he is doomed, since she is in India. Nonetheless, Brian then travels to India to meet her, and he is accompanied by Stewie. They arrive in India, which they paint a lovely picture of the country here. <laughs> this is wonderful, isn't it, Brian? It's so tranquil, I'm tearing up. Stewie and Brian go to tech support, and they find Padma. After spending time together, she invites him and Stewie to their family's home. When they arrive, Brian and Stewie find that she is arranged to be married to a man named Diraj, much to Brian's surprise. Padma then unexpectedly calls off the marriage by expressing her love for Brian, which makes her family upset, especially her father, who had already paid a lot of money for this wedding. Brian then works to try and get the money to pay back Padma's father. He and Stewie first start by doing a roadside service that extracts tapeworms from people through snake charming. This doesn't seem like it's going to work, so Brian decides to go on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. This ends really badly when Brian is asked his first question by Anil Kapoor, which is about the subject of cricket, which he gets it wrong and loses the game instantly. When Brian meets back up with Padma, he learns that her father did not need money back, as her younger sister has married Diraj. But then Padma says that she does not want to marry Brian because of his lack of knowledge on India, and the fact that they have very little in common. Brian is furious at being rejected after travelling such a long distance for her, but she tells him that she will always love him because by travelling all the way to India for her, he basically saved her from a lifetime of unhappiness. She kisses Brian on the cheek, just before she leaves, Brian tries to tell Stewie that the journey was all that mattered, but Stewie just disagrees with this. Now, the B-plot of this episode. The B-plot, we see Joe visits the Griffins and invites Peter to bingo, which is basically being played at the elderly parlour. Peter is reluctant, but Lois convinces him to go. At the parlour, Peter discovers that Joe is called the Big Cheese, due to being very popular at the bingo hall. Peter is not having fun, but to his surprise, he wins the first game. Peter's winning goes to his head, and he actually gets very competitive, whilst wearing clothes him that makes him look like a high and mighty, eventually becoming the new bingo captain, much to Joe's dismay. Lois tells Peter that Joe enjoyed bingo, and that Peter has taken the only thing that made Joe happy away from him. When Peter goes back to the parlour, Lois and Joe try and convince him to come home. 
When he stands his ground, Lois calls Chris and Meg to annoy Peter when he is playing, so he gives up and heads home. The episode ends with Anil Kapoor, the Indian audience, Padma and her family singing and dancing to close with a musical number while dressed in Indian clothing. Which, we see that Brian joins in on the musical number, but he's attacked and mauled by a Bengal tiger, as Stewie orders everybody to just keep dancing. This episode just felt flat compared to all of the other Road 2's. Yeah, there is musical numbers in it, but it's just not the same as the previous ones. It just feels like something is completely missing. Like, you watch this episode, and when it ends, you're kind of like, huh, that's it? Like, it just doesn't feel as big and epic as the other seven Road 2 episodes. Now on to the next one, number seven, which is Road to Germany. Now, disclaimer, this episode discusses jokes about German history, with the main focus being on a specific far right group and the Austrian painter. Also, for monetization purposes and age restriction and stuff, I'll be referring to this radical group as Schmazzies. The episode begins at the Griffin's house as everybody is sat there watching the Oscars. Mort needs to use the bathroom so desperately after taking laxatives that he runs into what he thinks is a portable toilet in Stewie's room. Instead, it turns out to be Stewie's new time machine and Mort is sent back to the past. Stewie and Brian realise that Mort does not have a return pad, a device which is necessary to bring the user back to the present. So Stewie and Brian take the return pad and go back in time to save Mort. They end up in Warsaw, Poland and find out that Mort is in a synagogue and he believes that he is in heaven because he sees his dead family members there. But it does not take them long to realise that the date is currently September 1st, 1939, the day that the Schmazis invaded Poland when World War II started. They cannot return to the present right away because the return pad to Stewie's time machine fails to activate. They all decide to go to England, where Mort, who is Jewish, will be safe from the Schmazis. While attempting to cross the border, Mort, who was disguised as a Catholic priest, was asked to do the last rites for a dead soldier. When the actual priest arrives, the German officers find out that Mort is Jewish resulting in the trio being chased by the Schmatzes. Mort, Stewie and Brian make their escape on a motorbike in a Back to the Future parody. When they arrive in England, Stewie examines the return pad and discovers the uranium rod, which is used to power the device, is depleted and the only accessible source of uranium in 1939 is the nuclear weapon testing facility in Berlin, Schmatzi, Germany. In order to get to Germany, Stewie, Mort and Brian join the Royal Air Force and fly a Lancaster bomber in a dogfight against a squadron. Eventually the guys reach Berlin, and after finding the nuclear research lab, Stewie disguises himself as the Austrian painter while Mort and Brian disguise themselves as schmazzy officers. They obtain a uranium rod from the former NFL player Joe Green, which, on the way out, they run into the real Austrian painter. The Austrian painter orders their execution, but Brian and Stewie distract him long enough for Mort to insert the uranium into the return pad and the trio escape back to their time. The group arrives back in Stewie's room 30 seconds before Mort originally entered the room to the time machine. So to keep Mort from ever finding out about this, Stewie kills the Mort that travelled with them by shoving him into the time machine and blowing it up with a ray gun. The original Mort then enters the room, but since there's no toilet, promptly shits himself to end the special. Road to Germany is a very solid episode. I think it's good. I don't really think it blows me away as such. It's just kind of very solid, very mid 5 out of 10. There's nothing wrong with it. I do enjoy it. And if it's your personal favourite, then cool, go for it. Sticking with Europe next, number 6, I believe, is Road to Europe. The episode begins with Stewie, who is obsessed with a British television programme called Jolly Farm Review. It's a colourful children's TV show featuring several imaginary characters. Stewie hates his surroundings and is very reluctant to stay in Kerhog, so Stewie decides to travel to Jolly Farm in London and live there forever. 
Stewie is desperate and he goes to the local airport and stows away on the transatlantic flight, intending to travel to Britain and to find the BBC studios where Jolly Farm Review is filmed. Brian knows about this and tries to stop Stewie from leaving Rhode Island and follows him on board the plane. By the time he finally finds Stewie, the plane has taken off and it lands in the Middle East. Brian begins to search for a way to get back to the United States, but Stewie refuses to leave with him and insists that they continue to London. Brian and Stewie search for a camel to use as transportation, so they decide to perform a musical number as a diversion in order to steal one. With the camel stolen, they begin their journey, but the camel then dies in the middle of the desert. Brian suggests that they cut open and hide inside the dead camel carcass, but they soon find a nearby comfort inn. A bit later in the episode, they decide to steal a hot air balloon from the hotel premises and make their way to the Vatican City, and they end up embarrassing the Pope upon landing. We then see the guys travel by train from Switzerland to Munich and end up in Amsterdam. I love the scene in Amsterdam where Brian and Stewie are just chilling out in the cafe and they just get absolutely stoned because of course marijuana is legal over there. Upon finally arriving at the BBC Television Centre, Stewie is shocked to discover that the farm is a just complete fake, it's a set, and his beloved characters are merely bent out vulgar actors. Your voice is lyrical like the gentle strum of a lute! Tiss off, you grotty little wanker! Heartbroken, Stewie decides to travel back home with Brian to Kerhog. After getting revenge on Mother Maggie, who kicked him, he decides to defecate in her shoes. Yep. Stewie then loses interest in Jolly Farm and takes up a new obsession, which is funky fruit hats. The B plot now is Peter is super excited because his favourite band Kiss is performing a concert in New England. Peter and Lois dress in face paint and leather just like the band members in Kiss do, and they join the rest of the crowd. Peter and Lewis manage to stand in front row when Gene Simmons then points the microphone at Lois to prompt her to sing the next line in the chorus of Rock and Roll All Night only to discover that she doesn't actually know the words, which just shames Peter. And have a wonderful time. Is that it? Oh no, no, it's a... And something, something all day. Peter is deeply saddened by this, and we see that Jean and Paul Stanley leave the stage. Everybody is just so embarrassed and annoyed at Lois for not knowing the song lyrics, and Peter accuses Lois of only pretending to be a KISS fan, and they decide to leave the concert in disgrace. Which, later that night, Peter and Lois stop at a Denny's on the way home from the concert. The KISS members are seated at another table, and Lois recognises Gene Simmons without his makeup on. It turns out that Gene Simmons was an old boyfriend of Lois back in the day. Peter's faith in Lewis is restored, and he proudly shares the news on a public access television show that his wife did kiss. <laughs> now, Road to Europe, I wish was a bit longer. I feel like they could have done so much more with Stewie and Brian in this episode. It's not bad, but I just feel like the 22 minute runtime is just a little bit too short for when it comes to them going to Europe, because there's so many places and so many opportunities that they could have done in this episode. It's still good, but it's definitely not the best. On to number five, which is Road to Rupert. The episode begins with the Griffins having a yard sale to sell off old household items that they no longer need. Brian isn't paying attention, and he accidentally sells Stewie's teddy bear, Rupert which causes Stewie to think that Rupert has been kidnapped. Brian feels guilty about this and takes Stewie to the toy store to try and find a replacement, but eventually he ends up admitting that he accidentally sold him, much to Stewie's anger. Now Stewie attempts to retrieve Rupert by tracking DNA samples against a federal database, which he gets from the DNA that was on the money that was paid for Rupert. They discover that the man who bought Rupert lives in Kerhog, but upon arrival, they discover that the house is completely deserted, which they then see a moving truck leaving from the house and follow it. Mayor West drives them all the way to the Connecticut state line, but he cannot drive them no further, which Adam West says that his reasoning for all of this is if he enters Connecticut, he has to enter every state that Connecticut's ever been with. <laughs> After a box falls out of the moving truck, they discover the buyer, Stanford Condre, and that he now resides in Aspen, Colorado. At this point, Stewie and Brian are on their own, and they head off towards Colorado. 
To get over the mountains, the pair need to rent a helicopter, after Stewie performs a dance for the man in the office. This animation is incredible for the dance scene with Stewie and Gene Kelly. It's just something small, but it makes such a difference and adds so much charm to the episode. Like, this is so good how much this animation just looks so smooth. It is so good. After they get the helicopter, Brian then crashes the helicopter into the mountain, and the two end up next to the entrance to Aspen. They go to the house with the guy who bought Rupert, and they see that he has bought it for his son. Refusing to give Rupert back to Stewie, Stanford and his family organise a skiing race down the mountain. So if Stewie is the first down, he and Brian are allowed to take Rupert back. But if Stanford wins, he can keep the plush and he can also keep Brian. Stewie decides to cheat on this race by installing rockets in his skis, but he then crashes into a tree and loses the race. Now Stewie is in a dilemma as he doesn't want to lose either Brian or Rupert. So Stewie's personal butler throws a cup of hot tea on Stanford's son Timmy's face, which forces him to drop the bear, which the two grab Rupert and make a run for it. This scene always makes me laugh, I have no idea why. Stewie and Brian then decide to carjack a car. Get out of the fucking car! Get out of the fucking car right now, man! Meanwhile, the B-plot in this episode, Peter has purchased his own Evil Knievel gloves at his own yard sale. He decides to use the family car to jump over a row of cars, but it's unsuccessful, and results in his driver's license being revoked by Joe. Lois arranges for Meg to become Peter's personal driver, and he makes numerous attempts to annoy Meg. One night, while driving home from the drunken clan with his friends, Peter lights Meg's hat on fire which Quagmire then puts out by dumping a can of beer on her head, causing Meg to be extremely angry. Another car then rear-ends Meg's car, and she's insulted by the driver, which Meg then takes out all of this rage by beating him up brutally. Which Peter is so impressed with this, the two bond in the car, and in the end, Joe stops by Peter's house to reinstate his license. Meg now worries that Peter will begin treating her badly again, but Peter says that while he will only do it in front of the family to keep up appearances, and that Meg and Peter are secret best friends. Now, I love this episode. This is definitely one of the best ones. It always makes me laugh. The jokes are great, the story is great, and I really do love the relationship that we secretly see between Peter and Meg. It's something that doesn't happen often, but when it does, it is really heartfelt. Now on to number four, which is Road to Vegas. <laughs> The episode begins at the Kerhog Gay Pride Festival. There's a raffle that's sponsored by Weenie and the Butt, and Brian wins tickets to see Celine Dion in Las Vegas. As they prepare to travel, Stewie convinces Brian to use a new teleportation device that he has been working on instead of flying. Stewie tries the machine, and in a flash of light, it reveals that Stewie and Brian are disappointed and they're still standing on the device's platform. With the device having failed, they head off to the airport. But what they don't realise is that the machine has produced an identical Brian and Stewie pair who were immediately transported to Las Vegas. The original Brian and Stewie then travel by plane to Vegas, as the duplicate pair check into a large hotel. Their luck makes itself present immediately with the duplicate Brian winning a large jackpot at a slot machine near the entrance. The original Brian and Stewie arrive and find that their room has already been taken. Meanwhile, the duplicate pair are having the time of their lives, with great food, the great nightlife, and a freshly purchased Ferrari. The original pair find themselves in a fed rate hotel, nowhere near the Vegas Strip. Trying their luck, they try the hotel slot machine, and they quickly lose all of the money that they brought. The original Brian just decides that he's already lost and wants to go home, but Stewie then admits that he's already gambled away their return tickets which then Brian says that he cannot call for help after he took all of the money from Lois. So Brian and Stewie decide to go to a loan shark to get some money, and they bet it on a basketball game, and they lose once again. Now, they're preparing to leave, but the duplicate pair are sitting nearby, and Stewie accidentally takes the empty backpack from the unlucky pair. And in contrast, the original Stewie unknowingly takes the duplicated pair's backpack, which is full of cash. As the pairs go their separate ways, 
an enforcer for the Learn Shark catches up with the duplicate pair. He confronts the duplicate Brian and Stewie and discovers that they have no cash left. The enforcer then orders Brian to either accept his own death or sacrifice Stewie, which Brian then just instantly says to shoot Stewie. Stewie is then murdered via a gunshot to the head, and the bookie threatens to kill Brian next unless he gets the money by the next day. Meanwhile, the original pair faced the impossible situation of being unable to get the money or go back home, and Brian agrees with Stewie when Stewie then suggests that the only way that they can get out of this is by leaving the earth. They prepare to throw themselves off the top of the balcony of the hotel, but Stewie then chickens out at the last second, leaving Brian to fall to his death. One, two, three! I'm sorry, I can't! I want to live! I didn't really think we were going to do it! You dick! A panic-stricken Stewie trips over his backpack and finds the money that the other pair had won. Returning home the next day, the duplicate Brian and the original Stewie bump into each other at the bus terminal. Stewie then realises that the device had made clones of themselves. After deceiving each other about how their respected friend's death transpired, which of course they're not going to say what they did, the unlucky Stewie, realising that the money was the lucky Brian's, hides it away from him to stop him from getting greedy and to allow himself to return to Lewis, and also give her money back. The episode ends when the two of them return home, while the duplicate Stewie and the original Brian greet each other at the pearly gates of heaven with not exactly the most comfort. <laughs> Road to Vegas is so good. I absolutely love the story that they told in this. The fact that Brian and Stewie have clones and you can just kind of see how Vegas works from both perspectives. You've got the clones who are living this Vegas dream. They've got all the money, they've got the fancy hotel, they've got the nice car, and they're literally just living in luxury for the entire time that they're there. But the original Stewie and Brian, however, are just living probably the harsh reality of being in Las Vegas, losing all of their money, having to borrow money, losing that, and then getting themselves into so much trouble. That kind of shows the dark side of Vegas. So I really like what they did on this episode, splitting between the fantasy and the reality of being in Las Vegas. Now onto the next episode, which is a Christmas special. So I'm talking about Christmas in March. <laughs> oh, lousy smart weather. But of course, it's the road to the North Pole. The episode begins on Christmas Eve. Brian takes Stewie to the mall, only to get a rude brush off from the Santa who works there. Stewie is furious that he waited all day to see Santa and he didn't even want to see him when he got there. So now Stewie vows to kill Santa and forces Brian to take him to the North Pole. Brian really doesn't want to do this since it's so far away, but Stewie then hitches a ride with a trucker, so Brian has to follow him to Canada. On the way there, Stewie then causes this ridiculous traffic jam pileup. It's actually really funny. Brian gets really angry and tells Stewie that Santa just does not exist, and Stewie becomes even more frustrated and continues to attempt to hitchhike, which he forces Brian to join him, and the pair encounter a Canadian who gives them his snowmobile. Continuing north, they run out of gas but receive help from the Aurora Borealis, who instructs them to stay at the nearby cabin. The two then set out on foot the next morning and they make it to Santa's workshop only to find the place an old gloomy factory which is polluted and it's in a lifeless wasteland. They see Santa who is a sickly exhausted and depressed old man. The elves are horribly mutated and inbred due to Santa's attempts to keep up with the high demand of gift each year. And the reindeers are cannabis feral monsters that eat the elves who wander out in the snow to die of exhaustion. Santa suddenly collapses and is too sick to deliver the presents. So yeah, this is a lovely happy Christmas special already. <laughs> Brian and Stewie agree to do this, but they end up wasting an hour and a half at their first house. They get caught being in the house and the father of the house tries to call the police, which Stewie then just kills him with a baseball bat. It's, it's actually, it's kind of a funny story. 
What the hell did you do? He was going to call the cops, man. This is then noticed by the mother and the daughter, which Brian has to duct tape them up, only to discover that they were in the wrong house the whole time. Brian and Stewie get into an argument, which Stewie says that this isn't even Christmas anymore. They pretty much just committed a home invasion. They realise that they will not complete the delivery in time, and they understand the impossibility of Santa's job. And Stewie and Brian abandon their delivery for another plan. We see on Christmas morning, everybody on Earth wakes up without any presents under the Christmas tree. They turn on the news, which is broadcasting the same story. Brian and Stewie appear on the broadcast and bring the dying Santa out in the wheelchair and explain that the humanity's greed is killing him. And if they do not shorten their demands to one Christmas present a year, they may have to abandon Christmas completely. Everybody agrees. And one year later, Satna has recovered. The workshop is once again lively and colorful, and the elves and reindeers are once again rejuvenated. This is an awesome Christmas special. This was so good. When I was watching this, I was actually amazed because I haven't actually watched this episode all the way through before. It is so good. It is really, really good. The song that they do, The Christmas Time Is Killing Us, is just so brutal. The song is so violent. It is really good. I like the contrast of having like a dark and twisted Christmas. Instead of it just being this happy and jolly episode, they really did such a good job at spinning it around to make it kind of depressing and dark. Now on to my second favourite, which is Road to Road Island. The episode begins with a flashback set seven years earlier. We see that Brian is born in a puppy mill near Austin, Texas, and he is taken away from his mother. Mom! Mom! Do something! Mom! Mom! Help! Mom! In the present, Brian then tells his psychiatrist about the memory. Afterwards, Brian then volunteers to pick up Stewie from his vacation at his grandparents' summer home in Palm Springs, California. Stewie does something really funny and he frames a maid for stealing like his grandma's necklace just to amuse himself over dinner. Brian and Stewie then go and take the trip back to Kerhog. At the airport bar, Brian gets drunk and when Stewie comes to find him, he leaves their unattended bags which then are stolen along with the plane ticket. So they have to stay where they are and they stop at a dirty old motel where Stewie tries to call home but he fails because he believes that the phone number 8675309, which is a song by the way, is going to work, which it does not. It turns out that their credit card has been declined, so the next day they have to escape their room and hotwire a car due to the card being completely rejected. Stewie and Brian now need to do a plan to try and get home, so they masquerade as crop dusters to steal a plane, which they immediately crash. Boy, will your face be red when they find the black box on this one. Now Stewie and Brian are now sat in the back of a truck, getting taken home. But then Brian realises that they're close to the puppy mill where he was born. Brian visits the mill again and is recognised by the owner, which we find out that Brian's mother has actually passed away. Brian says it's time to go, but he realises that her carcass has been stuffed and is now being used as a table. <gasps> Mom! Well, I say someone must have said a funny because your mother's in stitches. <laughs> the horrified Brian decides to take care of remains and bury them in a nearby park. On the way home, they're inside a boxcar of a train, which the two of them then perform probably the best musical number in any of these episodes. It is so good. When Stewie and Brian then return home, Lois asks Stewie about the trip, and Stewie covers for Brian, saying the trip was smooth sailing through calm seas. Lewis leaves, and Brian tells Stewie that he is so thankful for Stewie for coming with him and helping him lay his mother to rest. Brian says is there anything that he can do to repair Stewie, and Stewie just says to record the Brady's Bunch on TV, which ends the episode. This one is fantastic. It could be maybe my favourite Family Guy episode of all time. I just love the charm of this episode. The story is simple, but it's really, really effective, especially how we see Brian react with the death of his mother and how he reacts to being abandoned as a child as well. It's so good. I would definitely recommend you give this episode a watch. But as much as this one isn't probably my favorite Family Guy episode, I can't put it at number one. Number one is kind of obvious when you think about it because of how good this episode is. And in my opinion, the best Road 2 episode is Road to the Multiverse. 
The episode begins as the Griffins attend the county fair. Stewie has announced that he has bred a winning pedigree pig for the local Quahog clam deer. Brian is just stunned at how Stewie got a pig that's that big, and he tells Brian that he got it from a farm in a parallel universe. He shows him a remote control that teleports others across parallel universes. Each universe depicts Quahog in the same time and place, but under crazy conditions. Brian really wants to test the device, so they both visit a universe, where Christianity never existed. This means that the Dark Ages never occurred, and thus humanity is 1000 years more technologically advanced. Despite the existence of the Sistine Chapel in that universe, which has been done by John Hickley Jr. instead of Michelangelo. Which is quite impressive considering that Michelangelo was a tell. This leads a fascinated Brian to ask whether the remote can take them to other alternative realities. Stewie doesn't really know because he's not really tested it out, so Stewie decides to guide them both through several more parallel universes, about half of which are their own portrayals of the Griffin family. They appear in a Disney universe which is really really good, but this has to be my favourite universe they travel in. Lois, where is my supper? Still in the oven. Will I have it soon? Quite soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. 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 I'm frightened. Let's go. As time passes, Brian loses interest in the adventure and eventually comes to realise that Stewie has no idea how to return home. They continue their efforts to reach a universe where humans are subservient to dogs. Stewie finally figures out how to modify the remote device so they can return home but Brian is overwhelmed by the thought of a world run by dogs like himself, and is very reluctant to leave, and he takes the remote. Stewie and Brian then fight over the device, ultimately breaking it, which traps them in this alternative universe. In desperation, the two go to the universe's version of the Griffin family, who are all dogs, except for their pet Brian, who is a human, and they hope to try and find a way home. The dog version of Stewie quickly confronts the human Stewie, revealing that he has also developed a universe travelling device that would allow them to return home to their own universe. Before Dog Stewie can fetch him his remote control, Human Stewie then bites the dog version of Peter, and out of anger, he is then taken to the pound by Dog Joe, where he is set to be euthanised later that day. The two Bryans and Dog Stewie go to the human pound to free him, and both Stewie and Brian are sent back to their original universe. As they are being transported, human Brian dreams of a better life in a different universe. He leaps into the inter-universe portal at the last moment, and successfully makes it to the original universe with the other two. Human Brian is excited about his new life, and he's so excited to make something of himself, but he is abruptly struck by a car and dies. This episode is absolutely fantastic, it is one of the best episodes of Family Guy period. This episode was even based on the Family Guy Back to the Multiverse game, so that shows the impact that this had. I love this episode so much, the different universes are so creative, there's so many different things that they do in this episode that really makes me think that Family Guy really knew what they were doing. I love the different universes, some of them are completely random, but majority of them are really well thought out and very creative, especially the Disney universe. And with that episode completed, the Road 2 series is complete. Did you agree with my list and the ranking? Let me know in the comments down below. The Road 2 series will always be one of my favourite sub-series in Family Guy, I just absolutely love it. I'm really hoping that soon we get a Namf instalment, I don't know if that's going to happen since the most recent one, Road to India, was like 8 years ago now, so maybe it's over for good, but I just wish that we get just one more, like a big finale to end this series. And that is the end of today's video, I hope you guys enjoyed. This one was different, this is a longer video than usual, but I wanted to put something different out, because I really wanted to talk about all of these episodes. Thank you so much for the support on my Spongebob video recently, that has got more views than any video I have posted like in over a year and a half. So thank you all so much for the support on that, it generally means so much to me. If you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like and a subscribe, it helps me immensely. And yeah, thank you all for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers! Woo!